What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. We are in the truck this morning because we are going to pick up that Midnight Blue CB550 I finished a couple of months ago. Customer has been riding it around, having a good time with it, uh, and we're ready to do kind of the next stage. A couple more modifications as well as uh, sometime in the last couple of months it's developed a little bit of an oil leak. Uh, so I'm going to check that out, see what it's going to take to fix it. So let's go pick that thing up. It's actually a week or so later, the bike is still up on the lift. I went ahead and diagnosed it, talked to the customer and got the parts and everything so we can move this video along. So basically what I was able to diagnose is we have two main oil leaks. One from the cylinder head, there's a nice coating of oil right inside these fins. And then as the bike was ridden, the oil is kind of spread out even more. Also, it looks like we do have a failure of our cylinder base gasket as well. There's a significant amount of oil all the way around this base gasket, uh, especially on this left side. So the easiest thing to do is get one of these main engine gasket kits. So this is a top end gasket, which means it includes basically everything from the top of the block up. We'll have a new valve cover gasket, cylinder head, base gasket, exhaust gaskets, tappets, I mean everything. A breather gasket all the way through will be replaced. The only thing I'm not going to replace because this bike doesn't need it is the valve stem seals. Your only time you really need to replace those is if you have a pretty good amount of like bluish white smoke, especially when the bike is cold. If it happens when the bike is cold and then as the bike warms up, it goes away. Uh, one of the first things to check and potentially replace is your valve stem seals. You will need to pull the cylinder head off and actually pull the uh, valve springs and everything out to be able to access them. Uh, I think that uh, is unnecessary on this bike because there's no smoke whatsoever. So we'll go through and replace all those other seals today and I will kind of take you guys through the process. First step is going to be to remove the seat. We'll pull the gas tank off and then we'll move on to carbs and exhaust. You know, pull our spark plugs out of the way, basically expose everything. Luckily on these 500s and 550s, you can do this job uh, with the engine still in the frame. If this was a 750, we would have to pull the engine out. So it's significantly more work to uh, do the top end, either gaskets or, you know, I don't have any uh, reason to replace like piston rings and stuff on this because the bike runs great, has, you know, good compression and everything. So that's just kind of added expense um, for no real reason. So that's why we're just doing the gaskets, but just be glad that this is not a 750 so that we don't have to pull this whole engine out. Exhaust, spark plug wires, carbs, everything are out of the way. So what I'm gonna do now is actually go around and pull off all of these tappet covers. And I'm actually going to loosen uh, all of the rocker arms, just to give us a little bit of extra slack in them. Then we'll move on to removing this breather on the top, and then we'll be able to pull the actual valve cover off. And when you're doing that, you're gonna want to kind of start to loosen stuff uh, in like a crisscross pattern as opposed to just starting from one side going to the other. That way you're kind of evenly loosening everything so you're not kind of tweaking the head. It's even more important when we get to the actual head bolts themselves, but it's kind of good practice to do uh, throughout everything. And I do have the manual over here, even though I've done this uh, a bajillion times, I like to have the manual just to go in the order of operations that they suggest. It's just never a bad idea to kind of double check your work as you go. Thank you. 
Quick tip on these JIS screws on the top. If you just try to use a screwdriver, odds are one, you're never gonna be able to get them off. Two, even with a JIS screwdriver, it's really not too difficult to strip them. So I always just take my impact driver. If you're not familiar with what an impact driver is, I've talked about them a few times before. I'll throw a link to them in the description. They're cheap. If you ever work on a classic Honda, get you one of these first. You basically can put it in there. It's got the little JIS bit on it. And then we're just gonna tap on the top. Boom. Now that one's nice and loose. You could see how tight that was with you know having to hit it three times. There's almost no chance you could get that out without stripping it with just a screwdriver alone. Ready to pull our valve cover off. You can actually feel when you start to kind of unload it, you can feel whichever you know valve spring was kind of under load, it will start to lift that side just a little bit. That's why it's important to kind of go all the way around. And then there are little dowel pins you gotta Make sure it's free from those. Just some general wiggling. It's stuck on this last little one. There we go. Up and over. Our little O ring is. There we go. You can see this is one of the O rings we'll be replacing. Put that aside. The next thing is to relieve our tension on the cam chain. So this is gonna be, come on this side. It's 10 millimeter. Basically we can loosen it, turn it clockwise till it stops and then tighten it back up again. Next step, we need to get our cam out. So to do that, there's two 10 millimeter bolts on uh, kind of opposing sides on the cam gear itself. So we now that we have this one in view, we can actually there we go. Got to just wait till it hits a cylinder with enough compression. This isn't super tight, so. We'll do this and then I need to pull the points cover off so we can actually turn the engine over and uh, access the other bolt. Go ahead and turn this engine over. Like that. We'll be able to undo our other 10 mil. Once this is loose, the cam gear itself will be able to come off of the cam and come down a little bit. That will allow enough slack for the chain to come off. You can actually lift the cam up and out as well. Let's see if we can finagle it. Get enough slack on this. There we go. Now the cam should be able to come up. And we'll kind of carefully work it this way. Do not let go of this chain. Put the cam down on a piece of paper towel. Don't want to nick up any of those lobes or anything. And then temporarily, take a piece of wire or string or whatever you want, throw it through there just so that your cam chain can't fall all the way down into the crankcase. Now we, un we loosen this cam chain tensioner bolt in the back of the cylinder head here. We're ready to pull off these little rubber covers. We do have replacements for these as well. 
these uh, just kind of help seal where the actual head bolts are. These little discs. I think one or two of them actually stuck to the bottom side of the valve cover. So I'll pull all these off and then we are ready to start to loosen our head bolts. And this again, I can't stress it enough, is one of the most important parts to uh, loosen in a crisscross pattern. So you can either go look in the book and just do the exact pattern that they do, or it's pretty simple just to go like, you know, one, two, three, four, and kind of work your way crisscross from the center out. That's what I always do. So I'll bring you back when it's time to do that. It's about as close as I can get you, but we're gonna start loosening these up. They're just 12 millimeter. There's one, we'll come over here. These do tend to uh, kind of make some scary noises when you're loosening them, but if they were torqued properly, they'll be tight, but not crazy tight. Cool, and that's all of them. So I don't know if you kind of saw the pattern I went in, but now I'll go through and pull them all out. Then we're gonna be ready to, I'll bend my little wire up here our cam chain's probably gonna fall down in the engine right now anyway. It's not as important, or it's not as uh, big of a deal if it falls down since we're gonna be pulling the rest of this off. If you were just kind of servicing this top end, that's when you really need to worry about that falling down. Again, it's not that important right now. So I'll go ahead and pull all the head bolts off. Just use a little magnet to make sure you get the bolt and the little washer. And then we're ready to actually pull the cylinder head off. Now that all, uh, is it 12? bolts and then there's a 10 mil on the front and the back that's all of them we can actually i'm just going to go ahead and bend my little hook thing like this and just so we can kind of feed it down i just don't want to lose it down in there where i got to kind of start to dig around we should be able to actually jiggle this thing free the gasket's going to hold on to it a little bit Come around to the other side. Just gotta get it all over all 12 studs. There we go. Got our cam chain. Go down through the center. A lot of oil in this, I would prefer not to pour all over the rest of the bike. There we go. Come on over with it. Put it somewhere safe. Now we're gonna take the cylinders off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my head gasket off and just get it out of the way. blade very gingerly around just to kind of free it up and get it up and over our tensioner and then feed our chain through that's our old head gasket out of the way now we should be able to lift this one up and turn it pull that guy out check for wear this would be a perfect time to replace this if needed that looks pretty good and then for this front one, you need to actually remove this lock nut. Make 
sure it's free. All right. Sweet. And then the cylinder might need a little tappy tap with a rubber mallet to kind of free it up from that base gasket. A couple light taps around with a rubber mallet. I'm gonna pull this tensioner out with kind of work this up, all the pistons need to slide out of their cylinders as well. Make sure everything's nice and clear. Okay. We'll pull this guy out now. Cylinders are out. I'll, I'll go over this again, but it's really important that the bottom of this goes into a little kind of indention in the block down there. It's very easy when reinstalling those to not be able to get that in properly. Um, and I can show you, we might even uh, pull the oil pan off and I can kind of show you how to guide it in, make sure it's in there all the way. But this, uh, I don't know if you can see it in camera right now, but this cylinder base gasket right here is just, just disintegrated. I mean, it's, it's nasty. So it's definitely uh, needed to be done. Now comes the fun part of taking my flat blade razor and kind of cutting and making sure we remove all of this gunk, all of this gasket material. All the residual oil. I intentionally did not drain the oil yet on this bike. My theory behind that is there's going to be a little bit. I'm going to do my best to keep everything out. I'll probably throw some paper towels around here um, around each cylinder. One to keep the cylinders or the pistons from bouncing around. Two uh, to help keep as much junk out of the crankcase as possible. But if anything does fall down in there I'm uh, thinking the oil will catch it and then I'll drain the oil out when we're done and put fresh oil in so that's my general thought that kit comes with all the little o-rings we got like little o-rings around this over here we got the cylinder base gasket uh, there is a small o-ring around the cylinders as well let me show you that this is everything that comes with it so these little thin o-rings go around the cylinders right here i went ahead and pulled one out so you can kind of see where they're tucked up in there so we'll make sure to pull all those out. We're gonna have to clean both mating surfaces. So I'm not gonna use any kind of abrasive or anything. Basically gonna just use a flat blade screwdriver as flat as possible, making sure not to introduce any gouging, anything like that. Now's also a good time to just kind of inspect all of our cylinder bores, make sure everything looks good, make sure we you know, have good kind of loose piston rings, meaning they're not like seized into the ring lands. We can make sure nothing's broken, make sure our uh, piston ring gaps are kind of, you know, on opposing sides. It's just kind of a good, you know, check over, make sure there's no heavy detonation marks or anything like that in the pistons itself. You know, if we have it all the way down to this point, it makes sense just to make sure we don't uh, need to replace anything else while we're in here. But the next hour or so is just gonna be a lot of me cleaning this up and getting it ready to put back together. So after you've cleaned all your mating surfaces for what feels like a week, because this is by far the longest part of the process, 
you uh, are ready to kind of go back together. So some really important things you need to remember. There are little O-rings around the oil passages, both on here and on the cylinder head as well. So we're gonna need to make sure those are in place and replaced. This is also the part of the operation that some people are going to agree with me and the other half of people are going to say that I did this wrong. And that is whether or not you spray your gaskets with a copper gasket sealant. So I do have some on hand because sometimes you need this and sometimes you don't. In my personal opinion, and again, people are gonna disagree, the only time you really need to spray copper gasket uh, spray onto a gasket is when it is a copper gasket. So you can add that, it's gonna add an extra layer of uh, copper that's gonna help with sealing a little bit. Some gaskets, like the one that I have here, actually have graphite on them. So I don't know if you can tell, if you rub it a little bit, it will leave a little bit of graphite on your hands. Multi-layer steel gaskets with graphite on them are recommended to be installed dry, meaning do not spray them. Again, some people are gonna completely say that that's wrong. That's just how I'm gonna do it. That's how I have operated in the past uh, with success. Next thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is I mentioned there being a spot that the cam chain tensioner needs to go into. I'm gonna see if I can show it on camera for you guys. No idea if you're gonna be able to see it down in there. So right there on the left hand side, uh, right there, you can see that there's a little pocket. That's where the bottom of the cam chain tensioner needs to slide into. If you go too far in this way, it'll slide past that pocket and the cam chain won't actually ride in the correct position. The bottom of this needs to slide right into that little pocket. So we'll do that once we get the cylinders back in place, but I'm all cleaned up. All O-rings and base gasket and everything are in place, so I'm ready to slide the cylinders on. It's gonna be you know, a little bit difficult. I'm gonna try and get all the pistons uh, even with each other and then slide it over the top and just make sure you don't, you know, push down too hard or anything like that. The uh, There is a taper at the bottom of the cylinder to allow these piston rings to go in there as well. Um, so it's just gonna be a little bit of finessing. The process I find easiest for uh, the cam chain tensioner is once you get all the piston rings in, go ahead and slide your cam chain tensioner in, put the little adjusting stud through the hole. Then you can take your flashlight, stick down in there, and make sure that you're kind of feeding this straight down as opposed to it being too much of a you know, tilted angle. And that'll make sure it gets right into that pocket. It can, according to the book, it can be done with the cylinder all the way down. I find that very difficult, even with you know manually compressing the spring-loaded part. So I find if you you know leave the cylinder about three quarters of an inch off the block, stick this in, squeeze it, press them both down at one time. You know, sorry that I didn't get that on camera, but that's all the way through now. And then we can put our front tensioner on as well, making sure the up is in the up position. It's going to go down, turn 90 degrees, stick into the little pockets just like that. Make sure it's seated in. Cool. So now those are where it's supposed to go. I can go ahead and throw my little lock nut and stuff back on here as well. Just new head gaskets in place, new little O-rings are on our oil passages. Everything should be ready to go. Of course I did clean off the mating surface on the bottom of this as well. Now we should be able to start to feed this up. Uh, 
goes right here. right here as well make sure my little o-ring is still in place yes it is come down the rest of the way just like that cam chain still outside of the engine <laughs> which is what we want cool cut all the uh, head bolts back and washers back in place. I just use a small magnet, stick them in there. It's pretty fiddly, but can get it done. So now it's time to torque everything down. I'm gonna go to 16 foot pounds, but I'm not gonna actually just go straight to that. I'm gonna kinda tighten a decent amount around. In the same crisscross pattern that's in the manual. And then we'll go back around a second time and actually torque everything. Filled up my other SD card, but basically torqued them all down. Got our new little plastic caps in here. We are now ready for our cam to go back in. So I can lose my coat hanger. I'll go just like that for now. Leave this loose so I can rotate the engine around. And what we're looking for is the timing mark for cylinder, top dead center for cylinder one and number four. So we'll go over to uh, the points cover and set that up. Turn the engine over until we have, you can look inside of that hole. It says TF1-4. And we have the T-mark lined up with a little notch on the crankcase. So now what that means is we can rotate our cam until this little notch is right in between this mating surface on the right hand side. So keep rotating this around, kind of hard to do with one hand. There we go now, can you see what I'm talking about? There's a little notch in the cam and we want it basically lined up with this mating surface. Now we can rotate our gear around, get it lined up, put the chain on, run one of our bolts through, and then we're free. Once we make sure all this, the teeth are engaged and everything, we can rotate the engine over to access our other 10 millimeter bolt. Now the cam bolts are back in. You can verify that you're not off. It's pretty easy to get off by one tooth is make sure it's still lined up. We will turn the engine over 365 degrees and come back to the 1-4T mark right there. Okay, you can see it's directly on the opposite side. Do it again. Boom, right there. It's exactly where we should be. Got the valve cover and the breather back on with their new O-rings. And basically it's just maintenance from here on out. It's uh, readjusting the valve clearance. It's adjusting the cam chain, throwing the carbs back on, pulling out the old copper exhaust gaskets, putting in new ones, kind of buttoning everything back up. So I'm just gonna knock that out in a time lapse and then I'll bring you guys back um, when it's time to fire it up.
should be ready to go. Excuse the fan in the background. Should everything go smoothly and it start, I want to let it run for just a little bit and I want the as much of the exhaust to go out the door as possible. Fuel on. Got oil in it, everything's tight, everything's back on. I'm not sure how charged the battery is. Should be good to go. fired right back up. That's uh, exciting. No issues to report. You saw that I was uh, tightening the exhaust a little bit while it's running. I like to do that when I replace those copper exhaust gaskets. Uh, the theory behind it is, you know, you tighten them down, you fire up the engine, the engine running warms up those copper gaskets, makes them a little bit more uh, malleable, a little bit softer. So then you can tighten the exhaust flanges up a little bit more and it kind of just helps them form around the exhaust pipe which is how these seal. Uh, I guess, you know, in theory, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to get a nicer seal on it. So that's what I did. Uh, next thing I need to do is actually just pull this thing outside, give it a good bath uh, to get rid of all the rest of this excess oil on here, clean it all up, make sure it's nice and ready to go for the customer, make sure that I can uh, run the bike for an extended period of time and we have no more oil leaks, no more issues to report because I last thing I want to do is give this thing back to the customer and uh, have some oil leak or something pop back up. So I'd rather keep it a little bit longer, you know, an extra day or so, ride it around, you know, make sure it's 100% good before we send it back. But everything seems to be checking out well. Uh, probably also touch up the paint a little bit on this engine as well. I did not paint this. If you didn't follow along with this project, uh, this engine did come already painted uh, when the customer brought me the bike. Uh, it doesn't look like they used any primer, so it's not really holding up all that well. But uh, we'll, once we clean it all, we can give that a nice little touch up just to make it look a little bit nicer than it does now. And uh, it'll be just fine. Maybe a future project down the road, if this customer wants, we can uh, kind of repaint that engine with something that's going to last a little bit longer. But I love this bike, man. This thing is one of my favorites that I've built. Uh, and it's exactly what this bike right here is going to look like uh, in the next couple of videos you're going to see are going to be me kind of working on that. So 
I'm gonna wrap it up on this one, guys. I appreciate um, you guys sticking in for this long. I'm sure it was a little bit longer video. Um, you know, make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already. I've noticed that uh, like 65% of the people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So I'm trying to kind of remember to tell you guys of, hey, if you're into this kind of stuff, subscribe. I would appreciate it. We are very, very close to hitting 50,000. Um, I think that's it for now. I'll see you guys on the next one.